My name's Carson. Welcome back to Thrifty Garage, a channel where we do everyday repairs, how-tos, and reviews. And in today's video, we're going to be doing some repairs on this 2023 Honda Foreman Rubicon. Uh, we went trail riding this machine, and we found a tree, and now we're going to have to fix our damage. So we took the 450 out with the new ATV. And if you look at the front end here, we're square onto it, but it's not square onto us. So we actually um, went for a ride. And um, if we look head on, you can see how crooked that is. We're about, this should be about parallel. So pretty good damage. We've pushed all the side in. We did have some coolant start to leak. This whole fender is kind of crunched up. And if we look over here, that fender's a lot further forward. Um, this shifter all in here is kind of down low and all this plastic's got pushed up high. So my goal tonight is to uh, unbolt what I can and get these plastics off or at least get them out of tension so that they don't form a new shape here. We kind of want them to release their tension and, uh, and then we'll have to come back at this and see if we need to buy new bumpers or if we need to buy new racks or bend them back into shape or whatever's best. Looking at this damage, um, looks like this one has a pretty beefy weld on it. This side only has the one bar and it snapped right off. This bar um, has shifted a little bit. This little cover plate is supposed to kind of just float there and it's made contact and it's kind of tucked underneath there. Um, this corner is obviously what took the brunt. So it hit a tree and uh, hit right here, kind of hit right here. And this uh, little deflector right here, it's supposed to be on a, a you know, 90 degree angle of the machine. This whole bumper's kind of tweaked, so that one's actually on an angle. And that one's even more on an angle. Um, looks like this bottom piece might be okay. Um, we'll just have to get it apart and see. Like I said, the main thing I'm concerned about is the fact that we've got coolant leaking. So we want to get underneath there and see that. The headlight bucket here has pushed in as well, this side. Nice bucket tucked up high, kind of holding everything in. And on the other side, um, this bucket is actually all the way down here and it's supposed to be bolted in up there. So that popped out. Um, all the suspension, everything looks good. Looks like it was just a hit of the bumper area here. Um, this four kind of went through the ringer today as I'm looking here. Um, we got some I guess that's just i don't know if those are scratches um this did tip over on his on this side spinning some donuts so we got a little bit of scuffs right here but that damage is not that major everything on this side looks pretty good we do have some uh this seam has popped out a little bit it looks like this front plastic kind of kicked forward so hopefully when we pull that end forward this end will sift back into place and be good to go um i think the handlebars are good the steering and all that should be good we did kind of push in here obviously these these little bumper things these are kind of popped out of whack we're pretty far back on this coolant area and it might have honestly just broke the neck on that coolant reservoir who knows but usually you can just see right in there and see that coolant thing and it's pretty far pushed over you can see we're missing some paint right here but i did a quick research on youtube and couldn't find you know we, we have all these car rebuilders I haven't seen a lot of uh, ATV rebuilders buying wrecked ATVs and fixing them. So we're going to kind of take this apart, like I said, and uh, I was hoping to follow somebody else's lead, but I guess we'll we'll take the lead and, and see how far it goes. It can't be too hard, right? Unbolt this stuff, pull it off, and go from there. Here's a pretty good look at the damage as well. Square on from the front. You can see how much we're kicked over. In a matter of minutes, we got this apart didn't take that long just a 12 millimeter a 10 millimeter and some dikes to pull out these little push tab pins we got a bunch of these guys that we need to pull out dikes help with that pop them out i guess we did use a punch to punch the piece right here that was kind of bound up this is all pretty well loose now so it's time for dinner we'll go inside and have dinner um May not get back to this tonight, but we will keep working on this. But now it's not under as much tension and pressure, so hopefully things can kind of 
loosen up, let off. I'm a little more optimistic. I don't know how much these things cost, but maybe we buy a new front bumper, front rack. That should square everything up, put it on there, and then hopefully everything holds up and it bolts back together. And we'll dig underneath here and see what's all wrong with the radiator. Well, we can say this much. It's easy to get into. That whole thing came off in one piece. Got some mud in here we couldn't pressure wash off. Most of these panels are basically removed. So there's not a lot holding this together. So we will keep looking into this further. This radiator does look like it's pushed back. So we'll dig in further and see what's going on there. And uh, may just end up ordering new front end there. Maybe upgrade it, some aftermarket stuff if it's available. Um, we'll see. This stuff's pretty, pretty lightweight, unfortunately. But there's where we're at right now. Pile of parts is getting bigger. Okay, so looking at this little fan deflector thing, this little notch is supposed to hold this piece right here. That got pushed back. So if we pull this forward, we look right there. There is a puncture right there. I'm guessing that's probably where the radiator is leaking, unfortunately. The radiator, I think it might have got tweaked a little bit, but really not bad. I'll probably fire this up and see where it's leaking from. I'm going to guess it's right there. Um, really not too bad on the plastics. I did notice that... We had a couple of broken pieces. I, I think this might have been from the first rollover, spin and donuts. That piece broke off, and then there was another one stuck in here. And the, the landed on this side, and I think that that might have hit the plastics right here. So I guess that would have been this piece of plastics um, right here. So this got ripped off, and then there's a nub. So there's that guy. I want to say there's one that comes down right here. So this this little black piece is missing on side two. So I think this might have got pressed in and broke off those two when the rollover happened. And then when it hit the tree, came in on this side and pushed this back enough to impact there. Um, Kind of a bummer. Let's fire that up and see what we got for leaks. That's leaking down and all the way down there dripping or where that dripping is coming from. I'm guessing this whole thing kind of just comes off the front here and then it comes attached. Yeah, we got a bolt there. Is a bolt down lower? I think it just maybe bolts in up top there and the whole thing kind of swings off. Well, we made good progress. It's really sad to see everything in parts there. But I think we got the plastics off soon enough that we won't have a ton of damage. All right, it's been a few days. Look what showed up in the mail. These two things are on back order. It is the end of September. Those are now not supposed to arrive until the 10th of October. Thought about canceling my order, but we're just gonna try to wait it out, I guess. We'll just see how that plays out. Like I said, the winch is on back order. Now those are on back order. This was on back order at the dealership. And Partzilla, I ordered it all three for Motosport because it was the best price for all three. And because that was supposedly in stock more. Those on Partzilla were supposedly available in two or three days. And they were available on Motosport within five to six days. But then I got the back order email. Anyways, got the old radiator out. Salvaged some coolant. I'm probably just going to buy some more. Managed to spill a lot on the floor, a little bit on my shoe. But... Love these hose clamp pliers. These things are a lifesaver. Got those out. Gonna take off the fan and these little side bracket dealios and hook up 
the new radiator, hook up the hoses, hook up all the wires. There sure is a lot of stuff that goes in here. We got this electrical panel harness thing that goes in there. We've got a bunch of breather hoses. I don't know why the fan needs a breather hose, but that had a breather hose. There's this hose coming down this side for some doodad. Anyways, there's a lot of stuff to keep track of. This was super easy. This still not too bad, but a little more in depth. Anyways, disconnected the fan right here and uh, we'll swap out the radiator, like I said, and should be good to roll. So it's been about 30 minutes, getting this all buttoned up. Got our electronics back on here. We got all our little pop-in tabs going around. We got a bolt here holding that guy on. We got a push-in tab there, a push-in tab there. This thing sets in place here and then has uh, two push-in tabs going on the side of the radiator, or excuse me, you know, how is this held in here? Nope, it's just got these little guys, so. This little push tab pops over and that's the only thing holding that little fin thing we got the radiator held in by that one and that one this little side shroud the uh, overflow we've got one there a bolt there one there we got our radiator hooked back up we've got this breather tube coming up here we've got the radiator overflow tube going in right there we've got the lower radiator hose hooked up and the fan is plugged back in and then we had this breather hose that goes up and over here right to there so i think that's about as far as we can go until we have the front bumper and the front carrier um might start putting like the lower plastics up but i don't want to get it too tight because of where this bolts on here but we are coming back together. I'll get some more coolant from the dealership. And then honestly, we could probably ride this as is. Went to the dealership this morning and picked up a $10 bottle, one quart bottle of coolant. We got our coolant topped off, topped off the radiator. We do need to run it through the system, see if we got any air pockets. But we should be good to go there and hopefully we don't have any leaks. While we were there, we picked up the plow kit. We've got the winch mount kit, the plow mount kit the push tube set, the, the 54 inch blade. We also got the recoil starter and uh, the connection. So all we're missing is the winch and that will be good to go. So that will probably be a future video. That recoil starter goes in right here and we will have a pull string back up. So that will be exciting to have. Now we're just waiting on the carrier and the front bumper. I actually ordered on Partzilla the bumpers, so hopefully it's not on back order there and I need to cancel my order with Motosport. And uh, just that way we hopefully aren't waiting for another couple weeks. Okay, forgot to film a little bit. Started prematurely putting this thing back together. Um, did get the new parts in. Got the old parts, putting the new fenders on. I can't remember the right order on this, so I'm kind of just trying to piece it back together. I did take off these wheel wells. I did attempt to put on the recoil starter, but I could not get this rear bolt off there. So I might have the dealership do that on the 20 hour service. Um, so yeah, I got the new front bumper and had this all the way down, like I said, to the fender wells. The uh, motorsport order um, was supposed to not be here till October 10th. It is currently the 9th and it actually came in a couple days early, but I decided to order from Partzilla and then Partzilla said it's gonna be available in three days. And then I just called to confirm before I canceled my motorsport order. And then they said it was going to be five days and then it's kind of in limbo. And then all of a sudden I started getting shipping order or shipping numbers for these parts. So ended up canceling the partzilla. Motorsport was the cheapest and it got to me the fastest. I did put together the plow because um, the dealership had that. So I put the plow on and I'm still waiting for the, the winch for the plow. But I'm going to go ahead and put this back together. Hopefully I don't have to take too much of this back apart to get the plow on. But um like I said, we'll kind of figure out what the best ways to put this back together. It's been a little bit of time, a couple weeks since I tore that apart for initially. But as far as these inner fenders, we got these two bolts here. We've got a bolt here and then a bolt up on these front fenders. And then the rest of it is just the little push tabs. Boom, boom, boom. And we got a couple around here. Cut one down there on the inner fender. 
So uh, hopefully this goes together pretty quick. And then this front carrier is what kind of holds all the plastics up. So I think I'll have to kind of mount that and then, then I'll bolt the, uh, the fenders to that. All finished. So it looks stock, so it looks straight. Out with the old, in with the new. Got everything put back together. It's definitely best to put the fenders, the plastics on first, and then, well, put the bumper on, plastics, and then put the top grade on last. Uh, was what was best there. Um, this piece can be removed. Well, this this uh, plastics goes over the saddle here. That comes on last before the seat, obviously. Um, yeah, everything's on, looking good. As far as bolts for this, this front carrier, it bolts down. We got one bolt right here that kind of pokes underneath here. We got a bolt in here that hooks up to the carrier. So that slides down there. And then we've got this bolt up front here. The hooks on there, so that's got three on each side connection points. This front bumper portion has obviously that carrier bolt. We've got um, a little wing right here for this front bumper, uh, the front grill, and the and the skid plate both bolt right there. We've got another little arm that comes up here and actually holds the light together. I ended up having to pull and remove those two bolts, and then that bolt, and then also this screw right here pulled through. So I actually have little. I can't see it. Little uh, washer on that. Oh, it's right here. This screw has a washer on it. So that that light was really messed up. Got that back together. Pretty pretty good. Um, so yeah, this this bolt holds up the bumper, and then we've got this lower um, bumper bolt down here, and this upper bumper bolt right there. So that's how the bumper bolt's on. We've got a ton of just little push tabs everywhere in here. Here's the backside of all these push tabs. Um, lots of push tabs everywhere. We've got bolts right there, uh, Allen key bolt right there. On um, the back carrier is basically the same way where you've got a little bracket that sits down there that bolts onto the fender there. Didn't touch any of this back portion. Got this, this side panel back on. Going around the gas cap here is a little bit of work. Have to pull off the gas cap in order to pop this top piece off. But again, push tabs through here, all pretty much the same thing on the right side of it. I think that's it. Looks like we missed one push tab there. We'll put it back in. Um, but yeah, I think we're good to rock and roll. I know I looked at this, this angle before, but as we sit on here, everything looks and feels square. Definitely the way to go. Um, this would have been a nightmare to try and rebend these back into shape. Uh, you can just see how much of a curve that has on it. That's probably in a good two or three inches, if not more. Um, so that we probably could have bent that back into shape. It would have taken forever. It probably would have never looked right. And this thing looks great. And everything is basically mounted on that. Um, did get the snow plow um, hooked up. Still waiting on the winch on that. So that's where we sit right now. And that snowplow bracket is right sitting underneath there, just bolted up there. Um, and then we have the recoil thing that we still want to do. So still stuff to do, still some upgrades. But overall, um, back together, back to newish, newish condition. One last thing to note, we obviously did not get our reflectors with the front bumper. So we are missing out on those, which are right here. So we can obviously move those over, but I think I'm okay leaving those off for the time being. Um, yeah, see you on the next one. Thanks for watching Thrifty Garage.